Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is part two of a two-part video on phase converters, so be sure and go back and watch part one, which is tips number 787. But I'm in the basement shop right now, and I have two machines down here that have three phase motors. One is this closing 12-inch lathe, and the other is the bridge port over there. And of course, most industrial machines or machines that came from schools have three phase motors rather than single phase. And this is a repeat of part one, but you cannot run these machines on household current. You need a phase converter of some type. I talked about rotary phase converters pretty much exclusively in part one. So this part is about static converters static phase converters which are a little less expensive so let's take a look at how i use them here in my machine shop i think i'll start by talking about my closing 12 inch series 5900 lathe that i bought from the high school years ago and again three phase motor and it's a two horsepower i believe i don't think it's a three i'm pretty sure it's a two i've actually have forgotten and the motor is hidden down in the bowels of the machine so I'm not going to take a look at that nor is there a need to but look at how well how well it runs on my phase converter my static phase converter so the disadvantage of static phase converters is that you do not get full horsepower. So if this is a two horsepower motor, I probably am only developing about two thirds of that. So maybe one and six tenths of a horsepower or something like that. But yet I have never stalled this machine. However, I do not do that heavy a work, but I cannot notice the difference between the way this performs and the way it performed at the school eons ago. Well, this is my 200 amp load center breaker box. Most of these circuits up here are 110 volt, but there are several here that are 220 and uh, they are single phase. This is all single phase. Three phase cannot really be brought into the average residence. They will not do it. So we have to use phase converters and uh, we've got plenty of power here, really a lot more than what we need. I could get by with 100 amp, but when I put this in, I decided to go full bore with 200 amp. Right alongside my breaker box, I have a very high quality voltmeter and this is totally unnecessary. I'm just showing it off, I guess, but watch the needle as I reach around behind me and turn on the bridge port and see if it deflects at all. I really can't tell if it moved. I was too far away. But... Okay, let's get down to the business here of the phase converter on the closing machine. First of all, right here is the 220 outlet, and I have that unplugged at the moment for the purposes of this demonstration. But right here, behind the closing, mounted on to the cover here, is the heavy-duty phasomatic phase converter. And I'll take some close-up pictures of these items and put them at the uh, end of the video. And I think the phase converter over on the bridge port is identical. And this came from ENCO. Out of business, of course. Now it's part of the big catalog. But where did I get this? These are about $250. No, it was at an auction and it was $5. And that's quite a while ago. These are extremely easy to wire and to hook up. Runs 220, three phase motors. And here's the wire coming out of it and the plug that I just unplugged, so it's, it's 220 volt. Now notice that this is only number 16 wire. Oh, you can't run a big motor like that on 16. Well, you sure can because 
remember the higher the voltage really the smaller the wire that that you need so this is what it is all about now you can get these over the internet or from uh, cvs no that's a pharmacy uh, just just about any industrial supplier has these they are i don't know if you can tell but it's almost the exact size of a cigar box again there's the input there's the output. I know I'm going to get in trouble for those unprotected wires. Somebody else commented on that. And this has worked flawlessly. These are made up in Wisconsin or were. No, I take that back. California. I thought they were made up in Cedarburg. But that's all that's to it. But remember that there are disadvantages of this, and I already told you about that because it's not really producing true three-phase power but it runs the machine just great and yes of course you could replace the motor on these machines but it would cost much more because you probably would have to buy a brand new one and you certainly wouldn't want to do that on a machine like the bridge board up here where that would be a pretty hard motor to find in single phase so a converter is your best choice this is a homemade phase converter i'm going to talk more about it it is of the rotary type and a man made this for me i'll, I'll talk more about this later in the video but let's get back to talking about the bridge port which uses a static converter and that is mounted on the back of the machine. That is the spine of the machine. And again, it converts 220 volt single phase to three phase, but it runs great. Well, in order to show this next footage here, I had to do a little bit of housekeeping. I had to move this big toolbox out of the way. And of course I swept real well while I'm at it. And uh, that's the ratty looking stairways, but I think since the machine has the converter mounted on the back of it, that I'm going to shoot this from underneath the stairs. So let me move the camera and the light, although I don't think this is totally necessary, but let's take a look. All right, the camera is positioned under the stairs, and there's too many arachnids under here for me. But anyway, there it is. And holy mackerel, I put that on there April of 2013. So that's, what, nine years ago almost. So uh, it looks exactly like the other one. In fact, it even looks like it has an ENCO label on there. But uh, where did I get this one, you ask? And you will not believe this. It was at a garage sale 20 miles from here, actually a yard sale, and there was a lot of things out in the yard on tables. And then there was this laying on the ground in the grass, but it actually was still in the factory wrapper. It had never been used. And I asked the man how much, and he said $1. Well, don't you start looking for a phase converter at garage sales because you could spend your whole lifetime and not find one. And, uh, and I found this, and I suppose I would have been the only person that day to actually know what it was for because I don't believe the owner even knew when I talked to him. All right, this is the Bridgeport reversing switch. Runs just fine, but since that is a one horse motor, I suspect I'm only getting what six tenths of a or three quarters of a horse out of it. But again, I have never stalled it, I just do not use that, do that large and heavy of work. But what I like about a phase converter is you do not have to turn them on, they are always ready to go, they do not make any noise, they're semi inexpensive, and uh. The disadvantage is you can only run one motor off of them. You cannot run several motors. Well, for about the first five years that I had the bridge port, I used this phase converter. This is homemade by a friend of mine who passed away. His name was Ray. He lived down in Flanagan. He did a nice job on it. And all he, I had to supply was the motor. And I had that's a five-horse motor. And it came off of an, a McEngelvin muller that I scrapped out, sand muller. It's a heavy duty motor and it uh, 
it's bigger than what I need and it's kind of noisy. And then I, I paid for all the wire, but he did all the work. So the whole thing probably cost me about $50 at that time, and, but that's quite a while ago. I'll talk a little bit more about what's in these boxes, although I have never made one and I do not intend to. But why did you disconnect this? Why do you not still use it on the bridge board? Many of you are asking. And the answer is twofold. One is that you it's a two-step process. You have to turn it on. Then it starts up, and that is annoying because then you have to turn the switch onto the motor up on the bridge board head. So that's too much work for me, I guess, either that or I'm too lazy. But the real problem is it's fairly noisy, and I could not put up with that. So when that phase converter became available, I switched over. Well, some of you saw this switch box here, and you're probably wondering what it's for. And actually, this was the switch and the fuse box, and it does use fuses, for that rotary converter that I just showed you. And notice there's a plug in there, and there's other wires and cords with the plug still hanging back there. And I never did remove or disconnect because my thought was always this. It won't be too long before I burn that phase converter out. No problem, I'll just switch back to this. But of course that never happened and probably never will during my lifetime. Yes, I know that technically this little talk here about this phase converter belonged in part one, but it's cold out today. This is the back view of it. And in this box, as I remember, is a bank of capacitors. I do not know what size, but there is the air-cooled motor. And it's a Dayton, and it is, again, 230 volt, 5 horsepower. Bigger than what is needed, but it was the only three-phase motor I could find that was actually free. And 1720, 1730 RPM, and it draws 14 amps. So this is using a lot of power. Well, it's idling. You have to have an idler motor. I think I told you that already with a rotary type converter. So there's somewhat of a waste, actually quite a bit of a waste because you're running another big motor that uh, isn't really doing any work as far as cutting metal. And I don't remember what is all in this box. I guess that's the original Dayton box with all of the connectors and so on. And the pulley... They're still on there from when it was mounted on that muller. Now, when Ray made this for me, he knew it might walk around, so he put rubber isolators as feet on it, and that was a big help. And now I'm going to plug it in, and it's just a regular, again, 220 volt type of plug. So let me plug that in, and then I'm going to turn this on just so that you can hear what it sounds like. Okay, here's the rotary converter from this side, the working side. Again, there are two switch boxes here. So this is the one that actually turns the motor on. I recall that, I'll turn that off. I recall that I would always just flip that on with my foot, but it was that extra step that I did not like. Now I was looking up at my voltmeter hanging on the wall that I showed you before, and boy did that needle ever jump when I turned that on, because that's, again, four, 14 amps. That's pretty good draw. Well, it's a five horsepower motor. What do you expect? Well, this twist lock plug is the plug that I use to uh, actually plug the bridge board in it. And this wire is way, way too heavy. Maybe it's something he had, but or maybe he didn't understand that you do not need wire of that size for a one horsepower motor. And then this switch, you can see the wire is the one that would turn the power onto the machine. And then of course you still have the rotary switch up there, the drum switch on the bridge port head. But that's how this whole device works. And it works great, and it 
it is heavy. That is the problem. I, I just moved this about eight foot to film it and it was quite a chore for me. Now I will put this back under the stairs for my widow to deal with many years from now. And it was full of chips and it was full of cobwebs. Actually, what I'm going to talk about now belongs in a standalone video, but I'm just going to mention this very briefly because this is another option for a phase converter. And I'm over here at my Walker Turner drill press, my favorite little drill press, and it is equipped with a VFD that is a variable frequency drive. And this was given to me, or I should say, Palmer Moynihan and I traded some materials for this and he he's the one that has this all rigged up for me and the converter is right back here I'll try to get a shot of that too but that is a three-phase motor Rockwell Delta three-quarter horse back there that you can't see and it is running on single phase And this takes a while to ramp up. I need to readjust that, and I forgot how to do it. But I, it's also equipped with a tachometer here. And you can reverse it. So these are wonderful also. And I do have some videos on that, but I forgot more than what I remember. But just telling you that this is a viable possibility, and a lot of people are using these VFDs on their machines. They're semi inexpensive, but really not any, well, they're about the same price, I think, as some of the other products that I, that I told you about. You can change the speed. It's really a nice device, but that is not really what I wanted to talk about in this video. So this is, I guess you could call extra credit. Let me see if I can scoot the machine around so you can see the back side of it, but it's really uh, hard to move the machine. I'm in a corner here. I'm backed up and in a corner. Well, with considerable effort, I have the machine turned 180 degrees, and there is that Rockwell three-quarter horse, three-phase motor I just talked about with the step pulley, but in a way, some of this is now unnecessary, that is to say redundant. And here is the Tico VFD blinking on and off. They can be programmed, but it is not easy for an old man. Well, I recently acquired this beautiful little nine inch South Bend Model C lathe from John Collings down in Florida, but he's done this thing up real well. And notice the blue motor here, or green or whatever color that is, turquoise. That is a three-phase motor. It's either a half or three-quarter. I'm not quite sure. And it's all set up with a variable frequency drive that is a VFD, similar to what I just showed you on the Walker Turner drill press. And he just did a beautiful job on it. And in some ways, I guess you could say that that VFD is a static converter. So if we go around the back side of the machine, he built this control panel, and inside of it is the VFD along with connectors. I'll give you a close-up of that in a minute, and a cooling fan, and that case prevents dust, grit, and dirt from getting into the electronics. Let's go back around the... I don't know if I mentioned it, but the input way down to the right there where you see the plug is 110 volt single phase. So the first thing we have to do is pull out the emergency switch, push the start button, and then of course, you see the green light come on. Uh, turn the drum switch on. And then I have control over the speed with this little knob or potentiometer. I'm not sure what you call it. You can see how slowly it is moving. And in some ways that negates the value of the step pulleys. So I'm, I haven't taken my first cut with it, so I'm not sure just what belt position I need. And then of course to turn it off, naturally we would turn that off. 
and at the end of the machining session, I would want to turn that off as well. Let's go around the back side and take a look. Okay, I'm around the back side of the machine, and here is the VFD. Now watch this light up as I go around to the front and turn it on. Now that is the frequency. Watch that change as I go around to the front and turn the speed knob. Now I don't know all that much about these, so I'm not going to talk any more about this other than this is a solution for a three-phase motor that works real well, and I do have two of them. Well, that concludes the video. Well, that concludes this two-part video on phase converters, both rotary and static. And I have had equally good success with both of them in my endeavors. Take a look at some of the still pictures at the end, because I'll show some uh, stills of catalog pages that lists these products. Remember that American Rotary is a big manufacturer of rotary phase converters and they are the sponsor of uh, Keith Rucker and, and I think Adam and, and several others. So I believe they're a very high quality and actually reasonably priced if you look them up uh, products. So check them out if you need them but if you need to go the little bit cheaper route and i know you guys are on a budget some of you anyway that you will have really good success with the static converter so do not uh, think that they have no value all right this is mr pete saying so long for now and i'll see you soon in one of my thousand over a thousand other videos I thought I would conclude the video with this little bit like everyone else in the world does on YouTube. If you liked the video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, a like, subscribe.